Russell fam. Today we are going to show you how we can some purple hole peas. We have two bushels back there. Stay tuned. Alright Russell fam, we are back. We started with one of bushels um, that we're going to do first and we put them in this pan and we filled it up with water and washed them and then we drained them in here and then we have put them over here on this towel and we spread them out and we've gone through them like this and we pulled out little bitty pieces that we didn't want in our jars and we are getting ready to pack them in our jars. We'll be back in just a minute. Hey Russell fam, I wanted to show you that we are using our Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving. And we've gone over here and we've opened it up and we have found our peas, black eyed peas. And it is showing us step by step how we're going to do this. It is showing us that we can raw pack them or we can hot pack them. We're going to show you step by step, but I just wanted to show you where we got our information from and we are going to can these at 10 pounds of pressure in our pressure canner for 40 minutes. All right, and we are putting them in quart jars. I mean, I'm sorry, pint jars. We're putting them in pint jars, and we are going to add a half a teaspoon of salt to each pint jar, and I'll show you how we do that. All right, Russell fam, we are using pint-sized jars. I washed these in the dishwasher before we used them to make sure everything was good and clean. We are using this funnel right here. We are scooping up peas like so. We're loosely packing them in there. We're not gonna pour them in there and, and pack them. But we wanna leave an inch from the top. So when you pull it up, an inch. you see the little mark right here. And there you go, that's an inch. And we're going to add wa hot water to this when we get done and salt. But we're going to go ahead and get all of this bushel, put in the jars, and then we're going to wash the next bushel and do the exact same thing. And we'll be back in just a minute. All right, Russell fam, we have finished with the first um, bag of peas and we got, how many do we get? 16 pints. 16 pints. Now, the, uh... now we're going to wash the second bushel and do the same process we just did and get all of the jars done and then that once we get all the jars done then we will go through and we will add salt and water to these and I'll show you how we do those in just a minute when we get done with the second bag of peas. Alright Russell fam I want to show you the supplies that we are using. We ended up with 30 jar pint jars okay and so we have our we bought the ball regular jar lids there's 12 in a pack here, and these are the regular, there's regular and wide mouth, so make sure you pay attention to that. We are using canning pickling salt, so because it is pure salt and stronger than like table salt, the recipe called for a half of a teaspoon. We are, are going to use a fourth of a teaspoon of the canning. So if you use regular salt, make sure you use a half of a teaspoon, and if you use the canning, make sure you use a fourth of a teaspoon. Once we get there, we will use this to tighten the lids on our jars. It makes sure that we don't over tighten. And then we are going to end up putting these in some warm water or almost hot water, not quite boiling because it'll melt the wax around the seal. And we don't want to do that. We just want them warm enough to kind of kill some of the germs and make sure they're good and sanitary. So we're going to use this magnet to dip them out of the hot water so we're not dipping our hands in there. And then once the jars are done in the canner and we remove them we just put them around just like this and pick them up so we're not having to touch hot jars or use um, a pot holder or something like that and take the risk of it slipping out of our hands. I poured the canning salt into this bowl because it is much easier just to scoop out a fourth of a teaspoon so I'm going to scoop a fourth of a teaspoon level teaspoon fourth of a level teaspoon and put it in each jar and then once our water gets 
warm and boiling, we're going to ladle it in here and I'll show you that part. But right now I'm fixing to put salt in each of the jars and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, Russell fam, this is our boiling water pot and it is almost there. And then over here we have our lid that we have put in here. We have all 30. We have it sitting on low or I think we have it on one. It's on one. I'm going to focus. But we have it sitting on one because we don't want it, again, we don't want it to boil. We just want it warm enough to sanitize, um, which is 180. And we do not want to melt the wax. You see the, the brown on there? That is the wax that seals. So we don't want to mess with that. We just want to sanitize. So once we get boiling, um, we will move over and start ladling the boiling water into our jars, and I will video that, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, Russell fam, we are using our funnel, and we are pouring in the water just to the one inch mark, which is right here. That's it. So we've got that one filled, so now we're going to move to the next one. You salted them on it. I did salt them. Everything has been salted. And we're only going to do 15 because our canner will hold 16, but we have 30 jars and we're going to have to run two loads. So we're only putting water in 15 jars right now. So we will, we will be back in just a minute. All right, we are back. We have filled 15 jars with hot water. Now we are going to put the lids on the top. We need to wipe the lids with a paper towel to make sure that there's no water or anything that, so they're good and dry. And that way it will seal. And then we are going to put the tops or the, the lids. So see Mike's wiping them right here. We are going to take the lids that we have soaking. And then we're going to put the rings on them. And we're going to tighten them just finger tight. But using this so you don't over tighten them. It looks like this. And I think we got this and the magnet and the jar for like 20 bucks from Walmart. We got them so many years ago, I don't remember. But we'll be back in just a minute when we get done wiping all the lids. All right, we wiped all the rims and we are done. So now Mike is reaching in and getting one of our lids. And we're gonna go over here to our jar. And we're gonna put it down right there and we put our ring on it. And we just set them like that and we'll be back in just a minute to show you how we tighten them. All right, Buddy decided to come in and help us. Hey, Buddy. Well, that's good help. That is some good help. All right, so what we're going to do is Mike is just making them finger tight just a little bit, just getting them down. Just till they stop. Then I've got this handy $6 tool, I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't remember how much it was. If you put it over, it breaks. It won't let you over tighten. See the handle, it bends. Do another one so I can see it bend. You put it down on there, make sure it's good and even. And it bends. And it bends. And when it bends, you're done. All right, so we're going to do that to these 15 jars and then we'll be back in just a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting out. We've got the All-American Pressure Canner here, and believe me, we did not start out with this. Uh, we started with like a $49 Walmart pressure canner, and I could only get like eight jars in it, but we got to canning meats and stuff like that. Anything uh, low acid you need to pressure can. And the reason that being is water boils at 212, but we're at, the state we're in is zero to 2,000 feet elevation, so when we use 10 pounds of pressure, that takes us to a, a cooking rate of about 239. So that's going to pretty much kill anything. And But when you start with this, anytime you're canning, you want to just do a little splash of vinegar, not much. And the reason for that is so you don't get calcium buildup on your jars. Now when I get the uh, canner loaded, I'll come back and I'll show you how, how much I fill them and how we loaded it. So stay tuned. All right, now this is my first layer in the uh, canner. I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm about, uh, probably about 70% full with water up to the, you know, close to the top of the neck of the jars, right there at the, at the radius of it. We're not, we don't want to cover them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my second rack. And I'm going to put eight more. And when we come back, I'll show you the final process. 
Okay, we've added our second layer. Now we're fixing to put the top on. And we have a mark here, and we have a mark here on our lid. So I'm going to line those up. And what I do, this is a metal-to-metal -metal seal on these uh, All-American pressure canners. I mean, they, these guys, these things are tough and rigid. So I put a little bit of Vaseline around the edges so when it comes up, we don't have any problem getting it off. So I'm just going to set it down, and then we're going to give it a twist until we line up this arrow with this mark. And then I'm fixing to go in opposite sides with my, these are little marine, we call these marine flanges. And so I'm just going to start them. And then you want to keep everything even, and you don't want to over tighten it, you just want to keep it even and get it down uh, pretty snug, but don't, don't, don't tighten it too much. And you can look around the edges of it as you get to sealing it to make sure you're even all the way around. And then when I get these tightened up, I'll, uh, I'll show you how we did it and we're fixing to put some heat on it. Alright, I have gone in and I've tightened my flanges and I start with opposite sides and I go this way and follow your canner's recommended instructions. But if you can see, it's fairly even. And it, it has a radius top, so you don't have to be right on the money because you've got a safety uh, mechanism here that's not going to let it blow off. And you have a safety mechanism on this side that's not going to let it blow off, which is why I really like this All-American canner because you have uh, steam relief and you have a gauge. So if you exceed the pressure, it, it's not going to let this thing blow off and be a time bomb. But just uh, get everything finger tight. And now all right, now I have the heat on high. I've showed you how to load it. What I want to wait for now, it's going to take a few minutes till we get up. I need steam blowing out of this because when I can get to about, you know, count to maybe 8 or 10 seconds of just pure steam blowing out of this little valve, that means there's no more air in there. At that point, I'll put on my weight, and at my elevation and my state, I'm going to use 10 pounds of pressure. And I'll show you that when we get there. So, hey, come back soon. All right, we have continuous steam coming out. It's been for, I don't know, about a minute, so I'm pretty sure all the air's out. So now I'm going uh, with the 10-pound mark on the weight, and when it builds up to pressure, I'll show you when we get there. All right, we see by our gauge, we're at about 5 PSI. Our goal is somewhere around 10, and this weight will be our pop-off valve to ensure that we don't exceed 10 pounds of pressure. So. State once we get to 10 pounds of pressure and this thing starts dancing, we'll start the clock. So check back soon. All right, folks, it's dancing. We got steam, and we are the gauge says pretty close to 10. So these are pretty, they're they're pretty in sync with each other. So we're starting our clock now. 40 minutes. Then we'll shut the gas off and we'll let it cool completely down to zero before we pull this weight off because you do not want to take these flanges off under pressure or you've got serious problems. So check back. All right, we have reached our time, and we have just cut the stove off, and we're going to let this go until the pressure goes all the way to zero. Then I'll show you how to remove the lid from this canner. All right, we are now at zero pressure. The weight has been off for, it seems like it takes forever for this thing to cool down, but you don't want to take this off until you're at absolute zero pressure with your weight off. Nothing's coming out, and then at that time, it's safe to take it off, and these things really tighten up as they heat up. A little problem called thermal expansion, but they do heat up, so take them, take them loose slowly. And I'm going to show you a trick to getting that lid off. Even though we're at zero pressure, that water is still probably close to 200 degrees, and this, any steam out of it is, will burn you. So once you get these loosen off, when you grab it, you go backwards. So any steam goes up and not towards you. Now I'm going to set this in the sink, and I'm going to grab some out and show you the finished product. We have our uh, grabbers right here. I'm just going to reach in. Now I'm not going to show you all the jars. I'm going to show you one. And we'll set it over here. And as these cool down, you'll hear a little pop out of that top lid. That means they're uh, sealed. And in an hour or two, you come back and check them. If one will move up and down, that means it is not sealed. It hadn't popped. Uh, go ahead and eat that one. 
uh, put it in the refrigerator or something do not put it away so there you go folks there's peas we got another load to do and see y'all next time if y'all are interested in these type of videos we can meet also uh, leave us a comment and we'll be happy to show you that all right and also once these have cooled and you hear the lids pop I go on top of the lid with a marker and I write month the month and the year on the cans so I will know which ones I need to use first and if you look right here you will see that the water in there is still boiling so you want to be super careful with these when they come out you want to let them cool and after they've started cooling you'll hear a bunch of popping going on and that is them sealing and make sure before you put them in your cabinet or put them up that they do not bounce up and down like Mike said if they bounce up and down they have not sealed good so you want to put those in your refrigerator and cook those sooner than later and these do not have to be refrigerated if those tops pop and seal down you can store these in a cabinet and if you had to you could eat these right out of the jar and they would be safe for some say up to five years but after two I throw them away or we do something with them but I know they're good for two see y'all next time all right, thanks, Russell, Russell fam. If you like this video, leave us a comment below. Give us a thumbs up. If you are new to our channel, welcome, subscribe, um, click that notification bell, and let us know that you love these videos. Thanks, Russell fam. Bye.